Today marks my final planned Skyrim build. With this build published, I will have a playlist of 75 different characters for this game, covering every viable playstyle, more character backstories than I can remember, and a huge range of themes. It's been a good run, but I'd rather finish on a high point than just end up making near identical characters for weeks on end. So this is the final Skyrim build. Unless there's another edition that comes out. But hopefully we get Elder Scrolls 6 before then. The main skills for this build are enchanting, smithing, alchemy, and archery. That's right, we're getting all crafting skills maxed out. To start, we have 100 enchanting, all ranks of the enchanter perk, insightful enchanter, corpus enchanter, and extra effect. All but the last of these ensure your enchantments are as strong as they can be, and extra effect just reduces the compromises you have to make when choosing which enchantments to add to your gear. Technically, the elemental enchantment perks would also make your weapon a little stronger, but it's such a negligible difference that you really don't need to spend the points there. In smithing, you'll also need the skill at 100, and then it's just a case of moving up the left hand side of the tree, picking up all the light armor based perks until you reach dragon smithing. There's also a couple of optional perks here with arcane blacksmith and dwarven smithing. Dwarven smithing is great for leveling up the skill, and can also help with crafting our own crossbow bolts, while arcane blacksmith allows for the improvement of enchanted gear. This perk can be very helpful if you're going to gradually level up your equipment and skills over time, instead of just grinding straight from the start. With alchemy, you also need the skill to hit 100. On top of that, grab every rank of alchemist, plus the physician and benefactor perks, in order to make your boosting potions as strong as possible. I did also consider grabbing Poisoner and Concentrated Poisons, in order to make the poisons I crafted more effective, but it was a similar case to the Elemental Enchantments, in that it does technically help, but the difference in power is so small as to be barely perceivable. Finally, within main skills we have Archery, and you're not going to believe this, but you'll also want to get the skill to 100. After that, get every rank of Overdraw, pick up Critical Shot, Eagle Eye, Steady Hand, Power Shot, and Quick Shot. Honestly, the more perks in archery, the better. The priority is to maximise damage, but there's plenty of good support perks in here too. On to the minor perks now, where we have Sneak and Light Armour. Sneak is certainly the more important of the two, as in this tree you pick up the Deadly Aim perk, which will provide 3 times damage with both sneak attacks, as opposed to just 2 times. The more you invest into the tree, the better you'll be at sneaking, but with alchemy and smithing, you can end up being far better at stealth than anything in the skill tree will allow. Finally, we have Light Armor, and it's by far the least important. This skill is more for if you decide to focus more on the weaker combat archer playstyle of a character, and even still, the crafting skills will mean you're close to the armor cap before any investment is had. On to leveling now, where here I'd recommend boosting stamina up to 200, but everything else can happily go into health. I kept the character simple by not adding any spells, so there's no real need for magicka. For Standing Stone, I went with the Atronarch Stone. Not really much of a surprise here, it's possibly the most popular in-game Standing Stone to go with, as it makes you so much better at surviving magical attacks, and gives a little extra magicka to boot. While the slower magicka regen is a shame, it's no real downside to us. As for powers, you should be playing as an Orc, in order to get the Berserker Rage Racial Power. This is the strongest activated power in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Doubling your damage and halving enemy damage for 60 seconds is incredible, and makes this already OP build able to one-shot anything and survive any hit. The only downside is you only get this power once a day, but you can always just wait 24 hours after a fight if you want to spam it a little more. The weapon for the build is the Enhanced Dragonbone Crossbow, added in Anniversary Edition. This has a base damage of 30, the highest base damage bow before AE was the Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow at 22, and the highest base damage weapon overall was a Dragonbone Warhammer at 28. This crossbow is 2 points higher than the strongest base damage weapon that Bethesda added into the game. It is ridiculous. As well as having stupid high base damage, you can then throw a couple of enchantments onto it too. I put on Chaos Damage and Paralyze, but honestly you could put anything on it. The enchantment damage will always pale in comparison to the raw damage this weapon deals, so don't sweat the choice here too much. 
maybe try out Fiery Soul Trap to make recharging easier. Or the Silent Moon one, as that never gets much use. As you wield a crossbow, you also get multiple different bolts to use. The exploding dwarven bolts give a lovely little area of effect damage when they detonate, which is nice. For armor, I went with the Studded Dragon Scale set. This is a set you get from Tilted Scales, a quest which starts upon reading a book just inside the Windhelm pub. It's a very easy quest which requires killing a few skeletons in order to get a top tier unenchanted version of one of the best light armors in the game. On top of this, you'll want to make a Hunter's Backpack, not only boosting carry weight, but also providing a 10% damage boost to your bow. What really matters here though is enchantments, so make sure to also grab a ring and necklace to put extras onto. The primary enchantment is Fortify Marksman, and you'll need the ring, necklace, gauntlets and helmet to all be enchanted with this. After this, there's then a few solid support choices I'd recommend. These are Fortify Health, Resist Magic, and Fortify Sneak. The last of which I totally forgot to add on, but will make you nigh on impossible to detect. I did remember to put Muffle on my boots though, making footsteps silent. Health and Resist Magic on the other hand are all about mitigating the damage you do take. Any spare enchantment slots can just get whatever you want. What matters more than the armour you wear is the crafting set, so I'll go over this a little more exactly. For a crafting set you want a chest piece with fortify smithing, gloves, necklace and a ring with fortify smithing and alchemy, and finally a hat with fortify alchemy. All of these should be at 35% for the maximum boost. I'll talk about how to get to that point in the playstyle section later. When it comes to factions and quests for this character, you can do all of them. You're basically a god and nothing is outside your grasp. You are all powerful, the creator, the destroyer. None can stand before you. Your will is truth and every action you take is unstoppable. But if you want to focus a little more, then there are a couple of factions that really help you out. As a crossbow build, you'll be wanting to join the Dawn Guard in order to help ensure you keep stocked up on bolts nice and easy. The other choice is the main quest. You may have noticed a lot of dragon based items on this character, so you're going to want to kill a lot of dragons. What better way to do this than to go through the main quest, which is littered with dragons? and even gets you to meet up with the Blades, who send you hunting dragons. The follower I chose for this build was Teldrin Cero. Why? Because he's the best. No more justification is required. This character is so powerful that all your follower really does is provide a distraction for enemies. For this reason, I'd simply recommend travelling with whichever follower you actually like in the game. Anyone at all is fair game. Except for Farkas, because Farkas sucks. This character is too strong. Seriously, way too strong. It's supposed to be a stealth archer, and technically is, but I had to stop sneaking about when capturing footage, as all the clips were incredibly short. You'll be seeing me constantly one-shotting giants and dragons in the footage, because the damage on the bow is ridiculous. Base damage when wearing your armour is 946. If you then trigger Berserker Rage, that goes up to 1892. And if you sneak attack with it, 5676. Oh, and I made a Fortify Marksman potion that adds 180% damage. So I guess that would put it up to 15892 damage a shot. Well, not counting the increased damage from the crossbow bolt, extra enchantment damage, any poisons that's been applied, and the armour penetration of a crossbow. To put those numbers in context, the Ebony Warrior has 2000 HP, Alduin has 2355 HP. A single shot would kill them 6 or 7 times over. This build is broken. Now obviously there is some armour and stuff they have from that, but it's, it's just ludicrous. As the damage is so strong, you don't need any tips on how to play. Let's instead talk about how I got the damage numbers so high without using any glitches. To start off, you need to get your crafting gear up to a 35% boost. The way to do this is to make a fortify enchanting potion, 
use the enchanting potion to then enchant some gear with Fortify Alchemy, with the Fortify Alchemy gear then craft a stronger Fortify enchanting potion, which you use to make stronger Fortify Alchemy clothing, and so on and so forth. Repeat until you hit 35%, and then make sure you've got smithing on there too. Once this is done, you can then make a strong Fortify smithing potion, consume it, and improve your weapon and armour. Once your gear is all made up, you then want to look at crafting potions to improve the character while out and about. And here I have four new recipes using ingredients from Anniversary Edition. First is the All Healing Potion, which requires combining Ambrosia with Void Essence. This fortifies, restores, and regenerates health by a huge amount. The perfect potion for providing a pick-me-up. Then we have my Damaging Poison, which requires combining a Chokeberry with Impstool and does some pretty devastating damage, even if it's not really needed. Then there's my Extended Invisibility Potion, which you craft by mixing Screaming Maw and Lunar Mothwing. This provides over 2 minutes of invisibility and some health regen to boot. Finally is the most important of all the potions, Fortify Marksman. Mix together Corkbulb Root with Elves Ear in order to get the highest boosting potion I could find, adding that delicious 180% damage to bows for 60 seconds. Some of the new ingredients with Anniversary Edition just multiply things far higher than they have any right to, so feel free to play around with other recipes using the new stuff too. As a youth, this orc had led a pained and torturous existence. She suffered unmentionable torment at the hands of some truly evil individuals, having been born into servitude of the worst kind of master. For two long decades, her life was nothing but sadness and suffering. But one day, an opportunity presented itself to be freed. With a simple flash of steel, she had a master no more. She crawled her way out of the hole in which she had spent her life, and tried to begin anew but it seems there was more than one evildoer in the world. Though her life had improved by leagues, it was still a somewhat dismal experience. It seemed that life was pain, wherever she went. The gods were cruel, and allowed others to suffer in their world. The orc grew a bitter hatred of those who existed above Mundus. She had hatred burning in her heart, a hatred which would burn bright and make her strong enough to shape the world as she saw fit. Throughout all of the trouble she would endure, from the attacks of bandits, to soldiers throwing her in with prisoners, she knew that it wouldn't matter. In the end, she'd become stronger than them all. Strong enough to challenge the gods, and punish them for bearing her into a world that cared so little. This character was inspired by the most popular build I've ever made, the Dragon Hunter. A video which is currently the fourth most viewed across the entire channel. If you are sad to hear the news that there will be no more Skyrim builds, then fear not. There's dozens more in my Skyrim builds playlist, and I've covered just about anything you could possibly want. This doesn't spell the end of the channel. Far from it, in fact. I have some big plans for the following months, including some real ambitious videos, so I hope plenty of you will stick around to see what comes next. And of course, there's Starfield coming out at the end of the year, which I will be covering. But for now, that is all. As always, thanks for watching. Sarge out.